Thanks for staying with us on Report Desk Africa. We have pretty much talked about what's going on in Kenya and we've had our guest dissect it for us. In case you missed that part of it, it's not time to sulk. You can always have the replay. Um, but right now we're going uh, back to Nigeria, Lagos especially, um, Africa's largest city and Nigeria's economic powerhouse, which is once again facing severe flooding issues. Now this persistent issue highlights the challenges in urban planning, infrastructure development, as well as climate resilience efforts from the government, citizens, and responsible officials as well. As heavy downpours continue to pummel the city, authorities and residents particularly struggle with the aftermath of flooded streets, submerged homes, disruption of their daily lives as well. Let's take a look at this package compiled by New Central's correspondent, Bettina Nwedi. In my history of living in Lagos, Nigeria, two things remain constant during the rainy season. Number one, floods, and the second being traffic. Lagos, Nigeria's largest city and economic hub, is no stranger to challenges. Among the most pressing issues is the frequent and severe flooding that disrupts the lives of its over 20 million residents. During the rainy season, which typically runs from April to October, torrential rains are a common occurrence. The city's inadequate drainage systems are quickly overwhelmed, leading to widespread flooding in the middle of a cholera outbreak. If you're going to have massive floods, that water is going to seep everywhere now. In so many areas, those floods will be going across the septic tanks, that is the normal areas where people's waste is deposited. And stuff from the septic tanks is going to come out into the water. So it is definitely contributing to the outbreak of the cholera. For the tens of hundreds and thousands who rely on rail transportation, the floods turn commuting into a nightmare. Roads become rivers, making navigation hazardous and often impossible. Traffic congestion reaches unprecedented levels as both private and public transport grind to a halt. I'm living under the bridge and I don't have any work doing. Work that I used to do to survive is to carry load for people. So the reason why I don't love, I do not like rain at all, God never bless me. I never get money, I never get us, I never get even pack us at all. So me, I don't like rain at all for my life. The rain they fall, they spoil bus stop for us. We know they see load carry. And I wait to one shovel with a fan. Right now I'm supposed to be somewhere around 10. I've left home since after nine. I can't I can't even move. I'm still here. Like it's, it's a lot. The flood, the road is bad and everything. Like it's a lot. The proposed budget is six. While the government has made efforts to improve drainage systems and infrastructure, progress has been slow. With increased investments in sustainable urban planning, better drainage systems and flood management strategies, Lagos aims to mitigate the impact of future floods. However, for now, the residents must endure the yearly deluge and the chaos it brings to their daily lives. In Lagos, for New Central, Bettina Unwili. Mm. I can entirely relate to that story. I was on the road when that, you know, that the day of that downpour, and I know how long it took me to get from the office to, to the house. Joining us now concerning this um, flooding and rainfall issue is Bettina Unwili, the journalist who compiled this report. Thank you for joining us, Bettina. Um, I know that it's not the first time that we've, we've talked about flooding in Lagos across the country as well. Bettina, can you very quickly tell us how different it is this year compared to what we've been seeing in previous um, rainy seasons, but looking particularly in Lagos? Okay, first of all, uh, I think it's, it's paramount for me to note and let uh, all our listeners also know that Lagos is sinking. Now, uh, years from now, I think 2015 is what they have predicted. Lagos will sink if we don't rise up to the occasion and do something about it. 
Now, what are we doing about it is the question. You go around Lagos, you see heaps and piles of dirt that clog the gutters, that clog the canals. So when this rainfall comes, there is no outage. Some areas don't even have properly equipped gutters that can help the drainage of this water. So what you have when rain falls is that there is a standstill, you know, from the floods to the traffic, and it keeps getting worse every year. But when you try to sensitize a, a citizen, they tell you, oh, it's the government, it's the government. But we need to wake up and realize that not everything is about the government. When you take sausage rolls and you take sodas in your bus, public transport, and you throw them on the floor, that is not the government, but that is what is leading us to this flood that we are having to deal with now. So it's something that everybody should be concerned about. If, if there's someone who is not concerned, then you are the major problem that we are having in Lagos right now, not even the floods. So I'm glad that you, you even mentioned the drainage system because a lot of times when we talk about the issue of flooding, especially in recent days, we hear more about climate change and its yeah. effect on Africa than our own man-made problems. I mean, nobody is talking about the um, efforts to increase or make better the drainage system. Nobody is talking about clearing of the dirt that we see. Lagos State, for example, has the highest heap of dirt I've ever seen in my life in one location I don't want to mention. But all of these things are contributory factors. So why is it that we always tend to blame? I know, yes, climate change has its own effect, but every year we see it getting worse, and every year we blame it on climate change. But we're seeing some of these man-made things that we can easily just do something about, but nothing is done about it. So what would you say is the ratio of the effect of climate change compared to what we are yet to do, for Lagos especially? So, um, blessings, climate change is handmade. We are the ones causing the climate change, which is why these days when people Okay, I, I hope it wasn't climate, climate change. change got okay. I, I honestly, I was going to say that. <laughs> Great minds, they say things alike, don't they? But, but to be honest, yeah, I, I was on the road on that day, and I don't, I think I was, I was going to ask Bettina how it affected her directly. How did it affect you on that day? This was, what, two days ago, I think it was? Yeah. Yes, and it, it's, um, we have videos all over social media, you know. People were submerged to their waist levels. Yeah. People were, and we see this every year, people having to raise some of the appliances, um, some of their furniture in their houses on their heads and carry them and, and you know, suspend them. Yeah. And going to your question, definitely climate change does play a major mm -hmm. role when it comes to torrential rainfall, like what we're seeing here. But then I think Bettina was going to say that compared to the man-made um, problems, right, it, it's minute. So there's always going to be rain, we know that. Yeah. There's always going to be rainfall and it will increase almost every year. But it's how we create safe passageway for the waters from the rain to flow that really matters. Yeah, I think for me, two days ago was one of the luckiest days of my life when it comes to being under the rain because for me and Lagos Rain, we have a you know have friendly relationship. And every that, time I, I step out, is when no, no, no. Anytime <laughs> I step out is when it rains. Oh, okay, I don't yeah, need so, it. So uh, two days ago was the only time I was actually indoors, and it mm. was deliberate because it was a big event, you know, a mm. big wedding, and oh, I didn't yes. want to be caught up in all of that. And I was just lucky enough not to be. But I saw the pictures, I saw the mm. videos, and it, uh, jokingly, I just said, "Oh, we're going to blame this on climate change again." But in that said something very profound that it's actually worsened. Climate change is worsened by man-made. So I think we are worsening uh, mm. the situation where when it's uh, when the season is dry, we do not do anything. And then mm. we are expecting that the rain becomes worse when it comes. And it actually does become worse because mm. we're not doing anything. Our problems become more compounded and we are we're seeing this is becoming I mean people lose their lives. People actually you know do, because yeah. because of the current of the water there's some places you can't pass through. Uh, was it last year? I saw videos, not one, not tw not two videos of bike men who got stuck there and then couldn't go and eventually some of them were unlucky to make it out in life. I, I've seen videos of children who mm. got swept and just, you know, fell into something and then they, they could not, like, bring them back out. Mm. So this is a very fatal situation. I think we have Bettina back. Yes. I would really love to hear her opinion on that. Bettina, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. So sorry about that break in transmission. But what I was trying to say is that climate change is what brought us here. Now, all of these actions that I'm talking about that we do, the uh, littering without you know, remorse and without regard for what they will do at the end of the day, that is climate change. Now, the, the result of all those things is why we now clamor for climate change at the same time climate action. So there's climate change at the same time, we also have to take action for these changes that are happening around us. Because if we don't take care of the universe, she cannot take care of us. So we need to take care of our environment and do the right thing. Dispose of your, your, your beans and your dirt 
properly. And let us reduce our plastic usage. When you look through the floods, majority of what is causing all of these blockages are plastics. Thankfully, this year, we're not seeing styrofoam packs in, in, in the mix because it has already been banned. But if you look back to past years and the floods we've had, the majority of what you will see are styrofoams. This year, we are not seeing them. But we still have a lot of things and a lot of work that we need to put into all the activities happening around us and our environment to make sure that this becomes a thing of the past. Like I said, 2050, if we don't take action now, there'll be no Lagos for us to call home anymore. Thank you so much, Bettina. Clearly, um, this is something that has to be looked into. I know that I've seen that the Lagos State government put some heavy equipment in certain places, trying to clear drainages and to dredge gutters that have been completely submerged. But, you know, the complaint continues. It's more of being reactive than proactive, and, and we hope that things change. Also, we hope that the flood didn't affect you too much, did it? Oh, it did. I got bitten by the rain, and uh, the flood was almost up to my knees. But while we commend the government on what they are doing, I'm looking forward to a time where we also commend citizens for what they are doing. I, yeah, I, I look fantastic. forward to seeing citizens, you know, gather themselves and actually Take try action. to put our environment in place and yeah. in order. All right, that's a good one. Thank you so much, Bettina, for joining us. And uh, do stay safe, stay away from the floods. We do hope that uh, the clearing of the floods would definitely positively impact you and others in Lagos. Thank you so much once again.